COVID's been hard on me. The first few months of lockdown were actually fun. But recently, I've noticed that I'm feeling more anxious than usual. I think the frantic emails from anxious students, the increased requests for new clients, all while attempting to work two jobs with a baby bouncing around in front of me, eventually just became too much. My wife and I both work from home right now, and the lack of help around the house with two high achieving people means that the housework sometimes just takes a back seat. And for some people, that wouldn't be an issue. But for me, clutter and confusion actually cause real distress. I can feel it in my body. When I walk into a room that isn't well kept, particularly one that I identify as mine, I have trouble focusing on anything other than putting the room back in order. Needless to say, Baby Ella makes that a very difficult proposition. And COVID didn't start my difficulties. In the last few years, most of my closest relationships have become strained at best. Some are downright broken. Being the introspective person that I am, I've been working hard in an attempt to understand the pattern. I reason that it wasn't coincidence that so many of my relationships seem to go the same way. Other than my wife and my best friend, everyone I get close to seems to just not understand me. I figured it wasn't possible that the other person was to blame in all of these situations. It had to be me. And before COVID, this was just an intellectual pursuit for me. I wanted to understand. But as my anxiety increased after months at home, I started to recognize that something was wrong. I didn't know what, but I knew it was something. Some of the little quirks that I've been dealing with all of my life started to get worse. They were more pronounced. And it made me wonder if there was any connection between these symptoms and my relationship problems. One day just before Thanksgiving, I was running around preparing for the holiday. I looked at my bar in the basement. I love that bar. It's never been used as a real bar because I don't entertain often and I don't really drink much. But I decided I wanted the bar to be functional. I thought to myself, if people ever come over, I'd like to make sure the bar is ready to serve. So. I researched what is essential in a home bar. Mind you, we're in the midst of a pandemic, so no one's coming over, but I wanted the bar to be ready when they did. So in the middle of running around and getting ready for Thanksgiving, I went to the liquor store and bought hundreds of dollars in alcohol. And as I sat on the floor, adjusting the spacing on bottles that I never intended to open, Admiring the perfectly formed rows, it hit me. This is weird. If a client told me this story, I'd call this a problem. But then I realized how normal this is in my life. I always do this. I collect things, music, books. I alphabetize them. I create displays for them. I even have lists that I create to keep track of what I need and what I have. I can't tell you how many books and CDs that I have that have never been opened. I bought them because I needed them for my collection. They were items in a list that must be checked off. The holidays came and went, and I started to piece together how often I create lists or calculate things or create a collection of something or other. It reminded me of something I had recently read. 
I have a client who has an Asperger's-like presentation. So I'd been reading about autism spectrum disorder. It suddenly hit me that not only do I have this pattern of oddly intense interests, I also seem to have some social difficulty. It made me think, what if I have autism? It seemed like a silly thought at first, but then it didn't. So I did what I always do. I decided to learn. Over the course of the next few days, I went on a mission to learn about what we used to call Asperger's. When I did, it blew my mind. The more I read, the more I came to question myself. I've always been known for saying crazy things. And when I say crazy, I mean crazy by other people's standards. I can't tell you how many times I've had a rift in a relationship because I said the thing that everyone knew was unsayable except me. And maybe for that reason, I often get taken as arrogant or insensitive, even selfish. I always seem to feel everything too much. I smell everything. I get overwhelmed by too much sound. My son watches TV with the captions on if I'm in the room because I just can't stand to hear the TV up loud. I'm ultra sensitive to tactile sensations. I don't really like to be touched, especially in my face. I hate when I can feel my hair. I can't stand sweat. And some fabrics make me feel like I can't breathe. I also have a lot of rigid patterns. I wear the same things over and over again. I eat at the same places and I get the same food every time I go. I even get upset with my wife when she gets something different than the usual. Because I hate change. Um, when we are not in the restaurant, you get uh, sesame chicken. When we're in the restaurant, you, you do like a hibachi. Oh, no, no, you don't. No, I no. don't. You do sesame I chicken do. in the restaurant, yeah, too. I don't care what it is. You're absolutely right. Yeah. I don't know why you thought that. I don't know why you thought that either. I had to like, like I said, none of these quirks are new. I've had them forever. And usually, when I feel a little too sensitive, I know what to do to bring myself back down. But in recent months, I've found it harder to calm my thoughts. It's like I've been overloaded with feelings and my defenses are no longer enough. I thought about all of this as I read because all of these things fit into a pattern of a person with high functioning autism or Asperger's syndrome. Just to gain clarity, I started researching the possibility of having autism and not knowing it. Turns out it's not uncommon. Many people with high functioning autism figure out very late in life. Apparently some of these people function so well or they're so smart that they figure out how to adapt to the world around them. This is great except that it masks your symptoms. They learn to adjust to the way society says they should behave. So, they never recognize that they have autism or they recognize it late in life. I even found a book about it. I ordered it and I immediately read it. And when I started, tears rolled down my face. I've never seen a more accurate description of what I feel daily. It was like someone had been following me around all of my life. Still, that wasn't enough, not for me. Unsatisfied with my own conclusions, I scheduled a consultation with an autism expert. I wanted to know if it was possible for me to have missed this for 45 years. I have a PhD in psychology. I'm a licensed counselor. Could I really have missed the fact that I have autism? Could everyone have missed this? My consultation confirmed my growing fear. It was certainly possible. He explained that people commonly misunderstand the connection between autism and empathy. It's not that people on the spectrum can't feel empathy. It's that their emotions are experienced differently than neurotypical people. And that can sometimes mean a lack of empathy, but it could also mean too much empathy. And that 
without question, is me. I feel everything. I feel it too much, in fact. That wasn't always the case. When I was a kid, I didn't feel any of this. I didn't care what anyone else had going on. And I didn't understand why that seemed weird to other people. But somewhere along the line, I think I became obsessed with understanding things. It's the only thing that really gives me peace. I like understanding. And human experiences are my favorite thing to understand. I hate small talk. It makes my stomach hurt. But if you want to tell me your deepest, darkest secrets, I'll chew on them all day long. So, because I present relatively well in social situations, and I have high levels of empathy, the average clinician would never suspect that I have autism, including me. The next couple of weeks were very difficult for me. I was searching for understanding while also continuing to navigate the flood of anxiety that the pandemic presented me with. It affected my work. It affected my relationships. It became increasingly clear that this was something I couldn't ignore. I took some pre-diagnostic screenings online. I read journal articles. I even took trainings all in hopes of determining whether or not I was right about this new truth I had discovered. My gut told me I was right. My mind told me it wasn't possible. Hi, Christina. I wanted to find out if you do adult evaluations for autism. Ultimately, I decided I needed to be evaluated. Although I'm a 45-year-old tenured professor, so not really on shaky ground in life. I felt like having a full psychological report would provide me with something solid to stand on, or maybe to wrap my mind around. I called every place in Pittsburgh that suggested they could do an adult assessment. I struck out at every turn. Of all the places I called, only one suggested they'd actually take my case, and even they had a four to five month wait. But the psychologist I had seen for my consultation said he'd be willing to test me if I was willing to come to Philadelphia. So I packed up the car for a road trip. The trip gave me a chance to really chew on what this whole thing would mean. How would this new reality change my life? Before long, I was in the city of brotherly love. My first order of business was just outside of the city, in a quaint little office of the psychologist I had found. I met with him and his partner, and I answered questions for hours about my life. And when it was over, I was left with a night in Philadelphia, just me and my thoughts. My first thought, get a cheesesteak. My next thought, is one that I've been stuck on since then. How do I wrap my mind around this?
It seemed like it took forever for that report to come, but it eventually did come. And when it did, it gave me the answer that I needed. Throughout my life, people have asked me, often implicitly, but sometimes explicitly, why are you the way you are? And now, I have an answer. I have autism. The rest of the world spent the last nine months trying not to get COVID. I managed to get autism. And now, I'll have to decide what comes next. How will this affect my parenting? What does it mean for my clients? How does it impact the way I see myself? I've been reading a lot about autism since this journey began. And there's at least one scholar who advocates for treating high-functioning autism less like a disability and more like a superpower. That resonates with me. Because it doesn't feel like a disability to me. It doesn't feel like a hindrance. A person with Asperger's has a very unique set of abilities. We have the capacity for incredible focus with drive and amazing persistence toward a goal. And if that goal is a productive one, remarkable things can happen. My life is proof of that. At the beginning of this journey, I was on a quest for answers. I wanted to figure out what was wrong with me. And along the way, I think I finally figured it out. I'm different. But that's going to have to be okay. It's time for me to embrace those differences. After all, they've done me well so far. So, you want to know what's wrong with me? Nothing.